Hey everyone, welcome back to World of Warships. Today, I thought I'd put up another video. And I know it's been a long time since I put up my last one. But this one, I thought was pretty alright to start with again. This is Operation Aegeus, which is one of the new PvE scenario missions. This one is probably the easiest of the three that I've gotten to try so far. It's probably the better one so far, but that may be just because it is a bit easier. Oh, watch this T-22. It just sails right in the side of me. It's probably my fault because I should be heading a bit more south than I am. I'm not sure, I can't remember. I might have been distracted, I might have been looking at something else at this point, which I shouldn't have been. But that's alright, the sail's off, doesn't complain. Um, I should have apologised to him, which was a bit wrong of me, but... But anyway, these scenario missions, I really, really enjoy them. It's so much different to the PvP mode. And I've been having a fair bit of fun with them. I think the only big problem they have is with the way that the players get rewarded for doing them. I'll give you an example. The current one is Operation Killer Whale, I think it is. It's the one where you actually get to attack the port and then you have to get to the extraction point or the safe sail away zone, I guess you call it. I was with this team and we were doing fairly well. We, we finished probably five or six of the secondary missions, but unfortunately time just ran out before we could get to that final circle. And in that game, I would have done 180,000 damage, killed four ships, and just had a what would have been pretty good game, really. And in the end, looking at the result screen, it just sort of felt like, why did I bother playing for 15 minutes in this mode if I was just going to be punched in the stomach like that? And that's probably the biggest disappointment that I have with these gaming modes. This one, Aegeus, is because it's the easiest one of them, it's probably more fun to play because more often than not you come away with fairly good rewards. I think the trouble is the rewards for this for losing need to, well, come within at least 20% of the rewards you get for playing a PvP random battle. Because they last for quite a while, these matches. I mean, look, that's 17 minutes on there. We've been playing this mode for now three minutes. And there's another 16, 17 minutes to go. Just have to dodge this torpedo here. And you put so much time into a mission, you don't deserve to walk away with absolutely nothing just because that final primary mission wasn't completed. You don't deserve to walk away with uh, maximum rewards in that. I'm not saying that at all. You didn't complete it, you don't deserve your maximum rewards. But something in the general region of more like what a, a random battle player would get when they lose, as long as they've had a good game, it really needs to come down to how well the player has done in the game rather than how many missions you complete because Otherwise, this game mode could really go out the window quick. And that'd be a real shame because this scenario mode, they have a real potential to give World of Warship something different than all those other games and even other the other titles, even different from World of Tanks and especially World of Warplanes. If we can get some fires on this Ishizuki. But yeah, I hope they really get and support this mode and really think about the rewards. I think maybe these these missions that they currently have are their testing missions. And so they've designed them in three different ways and thought about different kinds of rewards they can give for it. So hopefully they'll pick up on it and they'll get better at it and they'll do them better later on when we... As the game goes on and this improves, so hopefully. Try and get some shots into this A over. She's 
turn it inwards. Shots may not get there. I really like the Perth in this mission. The Perth is actually pretty versatile. She doesn't get the heal of the Leander. And her Citadel is not that much bigger than the Leander, so... You can do reasonably well. But the smoke... I find the smoke to be quite a lot of fun, actually, because you still get to move around. You don't have to just sit still or reverse and go forward. You're always a moving target in the ship. And when before the spotting mechanics changed, the actual spotting aircraft really complemented it because you could be in close with the smoke. And then once your smoke was done, you moved out to a distance where when you fired your guns, you wouldn't be spotted and you activate your spotting aircraft and it just extended it to that point where you could still fire on ships. Of course, at that point, the arcs become a bit higher and you're a bit less accurate, but you still can do some reasonable damage. But it just meant that you were harder to spot all the time. So yeah, don't mind the the Perth. She's got her little quirks and it's exactly what you want in a premium ship. She's different than the standard ship. It's moving in here to pick up the captain of that scores. Like it's asking us to, because everyone else is just leaving in there. Oh, I hate that sound. That That is still probably the last pet peeve that I have when it comes to the sound mechanics in this game. I, I don't understand it because none of the other games have it. I don't know why you need the bullet time. Honestly, I probably should have used the smoke as I just entered that circle and made myself harder to hit, but I think I forgot about it at the time. <laughs> but it's not actually a bad thing, because it's, it's taken two-thirds of my life off, and I know that sounds pretty bad, but it also means that adrenaline rush has kicked in and I'm firing quite a bit faster than I was before. Some shots into this Mayoko here. The other two scenario modes they're quite interesting because they revolve around the port. The first one, I think I got to play two games in it, unfortunately, and I don't think I won either of them because it was a, it's a seriously difficult mode. What I'm hoping is that they, they bring out these modes so that you can play them at just about any tier and that they can have a couple of different difficulty levels because it, it's got to be, it can't be that hard for them to vary the ships on the enemy side since they're controlling which ships they are and surely they can put together the modes so that you can have any ship in the cooperative side the player's side and still be able to complete the mission within of course a, a tier spread that they have i mean you don't want to be in a little tier 5 going into a cooperative game where you've got tier 10s on your side and you're the only tier 5 in your team of 7 ships and that would be well in a destroyer it's probably not as bad because you're not easily spotted I think I actually forgot about that Mayoko until he actually fired on me again there it reminded me that he was still around so I'll just turn around and finish him off I think I actually do activate the Hydro just here to make sure there aren't any torpedoes coming from him. But he didn't live long enough. But yeah, hopefully, in the end, they can improve on these scenario modes, because I love them. This this is fun. Even using any class of ship. Destroyers are probably a bit... I don't know, but... They haven't really balanced these yet for destroyers, it seems. I suppose it is harder to balance this for destroyers, given how they deal damage and how they're meant to be played, but then again, there's got to be a way to do it. Maybe it's just players haven't worked out how to play destroyers in these modes, or how Wargaming wants you to play them in these modes, I'm not sure. Probably not. I, I think it's more that they haven't been balanced for the destroyers properly yet. But that's just probably going to take more live data, which is why we're getting them out there now and having a go at them all. Hopefully you guys are playing these modes. They they need all the data they can get back so they can put them together as best they can. Let's watch these dive bombers coming in. 
don't have really good anti-air on this ship, unfortunately. Now watch this, though. If you think these AI bots don't have any brains in their heads, just watch this Liberty ship dodges these torpedoes better than most players I've seen. You can't tell me that these bots aren't trying to help you win. Apart from that, sh that scores, which just seems to blunder straight into the enemy lines, which is really weird in this mode. I'm just going to pull into the middle of these Liberty ships. I actually get to a point here where I'm a bit worried about my health, so I sort of hide in between the Liberty ships and try and get the, the enemies that are firing on us to fire at them for a little bit, so I'm kind of using them as bait, which is probably not the right thing to do, but it's the survival thing to do. You can see I keep looking up into this top corner, and that's just simply because that's where these enemies are going to come from. And playing these modes, that is one of the big things. There aren't random spawns. They're all coming from pretty much similar directions. Although in the Killer Whale one, it feels a little bit more random about what kind of ships and where they're going to come from. They are actually spawning random ships. You don't get the same ships all the time at every spawn, but you usually know which is going to be the next spawn point. So I'll throw up the spotter plane and some long range shots into the footer attacker. And I see the carrier spotted over there. Start up my smoke because I just want to. Targeted by three ships and I don't want to die straight away. And I see that Ryujo over there, so I switch my fire to him to try and get these carriers down. Carriers are usually a priority target for just about everyone, so why not? <laughs> They're pretty much the most dangerous thing on the battlefield in the in the game. And it's not because of the damage they do or the fact that they can come out and surprise you with the aircraft anyway. It's mostly because of the fact that they can spot just about anything in any position. Except if it's in smoke, then it's a bit harder for them. And I guess that's probably why Wargaming have changed the rewards for spotting around and a few of the rewards in the latest patch 6.6.7, no 6.7 oh point six point seven, something like that so that the the focus is for carriers to try and spot things and let other people do damage to them rather than damaging themselves which I suppose is a valid thing but I don't know carriers are supposed to be destructive that's what they were some good shots into this Kuma. I'm getting worried about the destroyer and the other cruiser that's getting close. You see I'll fire those final shots and then look away. I didn't even realise they were on target until then. And <laughs> I got a good, pretty big shock just then when I was playing. But it's coming to the point where we've got this now. And there's only a destroyer and a carrier and myself left on the team and I don't have a lot of hit points left. Well, almost 10,000 hit points. It's one citadel, I suppose. Try and finish off this Shiratsuyu. But he activates his smoke, and unfortunately I don't get to finish him off, even though I think I, I bring his health down pretty far. So he's at half health there, and I fire in just before he activates his smoke. And he disappears. I hit him three or four more times. So it was probably close. But it doesn't matter. That's the end of the mission. And there we go. Five stars. It's not so hard on this mission. The other two are m much more difficult to get five stars on. Close to 500,000 credits. Nearly 8,000 experience. The Natural Selection Medal. And the Guardian, which you get for having 60 ally ships survive during your times doing missions. And 211,000 damage. I don't think I've broken the 200,000 damage in the random battles yet. I think the closest I've gotten is 198,000 in my Grosko first. Which is a bit of a shame. Just missed out on getting there. And so, that was Operation Aegeus. I really enjoy these modes and I hope Wargaming are going to make a lot of them. 
and really develop them into something really good. But that's it for today, and I'll catch you all next time.